Welcome back everyone, Jake here. Currently, we're on day 68 of Russia's disastrous invasion of Ukraine, and it's estimated that over 23,000 Russian soldiers have been killed. They're still losing about 100 or 200 a day. This doesn't count wounded in action, missing in action, or POWs. When we check in with the war map put out by the BBC, Russia hasn't made any major advances in the Donbass region, and fighting around Kurzon has been intensifying as Ukrainian forces are concentrating and trying to push back Russian forces in the suburbs around Kurzon. The primary reason for this is that if Russian forces can advance and take Mykolaiv as soon as their ground forces are within artillery range of Odessa, more than likely Russia is just going to completely destroy and flatten the city, similar to what Russia did to Mariupol. They just want control of the coast in the short term. They don't really care about destroying buildings or killing civilians or any of that. So I think Ukraine's primary objective is to hold the line in Donbass and push back uh, along Kherson to get them to the other side of the Dnieper River. Additionally, it looks more likely that Russia is planning to fake independence votes in seized Ukrainian territories. This would happen down here in the south in Kurzon. Russia is going to hold fake elections where, surprise, surprise, 95% of voters under Russian occupation will vote in favor of remaining under Russian occupation. Of course, this is nonsense. There are no free or fair elections anywhere where Russia is. Case in point, look at this story about a Russian man who was detained and fined for wearing shoes with Ukraine's colors. Blue and yellows, these are just ASICs uh, athletic shoes. He was not making a political statement. This was not a political protest. He probably bought these shoes before the war started. But this is how dystopian and uh, authoritarian and anti- <laughs> free 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 speech free anything in Russia that the country is where wearing blue and yellow shoes will get you arrested by Russian police. So do you really think there's a free and fair election happening in Kurzon where the people living under military occupation can really vote to no longer be under military occupation? Another story I want to quick share with you guys is that Vladimir Putin stops daughter from flying abroad as she didn't plan to return. This is Putin's eldest daughter, and apparently she was planning a romantic getaway with her partner in order to celebrate her 37th birthday. This is what she looks like. And Vladimir Putin blocked his eldest daughter from traveling abroad amid fears she didn't intend to return to Russia. Scientist Dr. Maria Vornisova wanted to fly to a friendly country for a tropical be beach vacation. Putin responded with a categorical refusal, strengthening the security protection around her. According to our information, the president's eldest daughter did not plan to return to Russia. Over the last 20 years, Vladimir Putin has siphoned away and stole probably around $200 billion from the Russian people, so I'm sure a couple billion of that has made it to his oldest daughter, and she could live comfortably on a beach uh, somewhere very nice away from all the politics and hassle that her father has created. In this video, I want to focus on Russia's soft power, and if you're not familiar with this term, there are two ways to exert influence over the rest of the world, politically. There's political hard power and political soft power. Hard power is the exercise of influence through coercion, relying on tactics like military force, payments, and economic sanctions. Soft power uses attraction and persuasion, persuasion to change minds and influence behavior. Its sources include culture, political values, and positive global engagement. This means diplomacy. And here is a really interesting article from a website called Brand Finance talking about global soft power and the index for the year 2022. And apparently the USA bounces back better to the top of the nation brand ranking. 
USA reclaims first place in ranking after turning corner on COVID-19. So I think the last two years, uh, first of all, as an American, I'll just acknowledge that the Iraq war was a disaster. Uh, let's go ahead and blame the Bush administration for that. And uh, the America's uh, brand, America's soft power on the world, was uh, severely devastated as a result of that disastrous invasion of Iraq. And here we are almost 20 years later, and perhaps America's soft power is finally starting to recover. And these rankings, obviously this is just one survey, how scientific can this be? But America is number one, up from six. UK is two, Germany is three, China is four, Japan is five. Russia was nine on this list. However, there's an asterisk. Research conducted in the autumn of 2021 does not account for the impact of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. When we go down here and look at who is to blame for the conflict in Ukraine, this is pretty fascinating. Around 80% of people in Japan say it's Russia's fault this war is happening. Very small percentages. Is it the fault of Ukraine? Is it the fault of NATO? Is it the fault of the United States? You can then see this scale of who blames who for this war occurring between Russia and Ukraine. And the interesting one is the United States with 20% of Americans saying it's America's fault that Russia invaded Ukraine. And it's only when you get to China way over here that you can see that about 50%, 55% blame the United States and very few people in China are blaming Russia for Russia invading invading Ukraine. And Russia, for the last 20 years under Vladimir Putin, has attempted soft power. And this video I'm going to show you in a second is very fascinating. Unfortunately, the quality is not that great. This video is 10 years old, put out by the Kremlin. And this is one of the only videos you will find of Vladimir Putin speaking English. Obviously, he's a 70-year-old man, and when he was a KGB intelligence officer, probably was valuable to him to study and learn English, and uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to speak it. But he made this video uh, for the committee who decides what city gets the World Expo. So in 2013, he made this video to convince a committee to allow the World Expo to be held in Russia for 2020. Let's watch a little bit of this clip. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to greet members and guests of the General Assembly of the International Exhibitions Bureau. Russia has a long and rich experience of participation in the World Expo movement. We took part in the very first Universal Exhibition in London in 1851 at the Paris exhibition in 1900. Our pavilion won the Calder Gold Medal and Grand Prix. But in all this time, Russia has not hosted the World Expo. Not once. Surely, time has come to change this. I think this is a fascinating video. For one, he kind of looks and sounds like a vampire when speaking English. But to him, this has to be degrading. He's a former KGB Soviet intelligence officer, and he's being forced to speak this guttural language to the international community to beg them to allow Russia to host this event. Why do countries like Russia and China always want to hold these international events like the Olympics or the World Expo? And this is so that they can extend their soft power. A lot of Western countries don't want to host the Olympics because it's expensive and it's a hassle, but dictators love holding international events on their soil because it gives them legitimacy and it allows them to promote their soft power. But I'm sure recording this video in English, rehearsing this, practicing this, Putin in 2013 probably viewed this as a low point in his life. When you think about the height of the Soviet Empire, the height of Moscow's power. In 1950, they had the largest country in the world, and communism extended over 
all of these countries in Eastern Europe and Asia. So to them, uh, the rest of the world should be speaking Russian. If the United States hadn't developed the Manhattan Project and gotten the bomb first, and instead Russia took all those uh, German scientists back to Moscow, maybe they would have gotten the bomb first and extended communism around the world. They would have, uh, you know, had global ambition extending beyond their current borders in 1950. So to Putin trying to appeal to soft power, he hates it, and he's not that good at it. Russia hasn't been winning in the soft power battle around the world. However, I do feel like there was a certain level of goodwill in these former Soviet states towards Russia, towards Moscow, because of their shared experience, their shared history in the failure of communism. Communism on paper, in theory, sounds like a good idea for peasants and workers, but in reality, there's no way to stop it from becoming basically an authoritarian uh, dystopian nightmare. So I think there was a certain level of camaraderie and goodwill amongst all of these countries with Moscow, but with Russia invading Ukraine, basically committing genocide, uh, leveling cities, killing civilians, all of that goodwill that they had over the last 30 years has completely evaporated. Russia's soft power standings in the world probably will fall to uh, comparable levels with other dictators like North Korea. And here's an article I'll link down below. Soviet monuments come down across Europe. Uh, there's a very famous statue in Kiev, and Ukraine has finally dismantled a huge Soviet-era monument in the center of Kyiv, symbolizing the friendship between Russia and Ukraine. That friendship is officially over. They are now, you know, mortal enemies for life. Let me show you a clip from this video. So people are celebrating, people are cheering. Anybody that had a positive opinion about Russia prior to this invasion, I'm sure that they're flipping their stance. They're not going to be able to publicly express uh, those, feel those positive feelings towards Russia anymore. Likewise, with my videos, I know in the comments section it can turn into a flame war sometimes, but the amount of people internationally, the amount of people supporting Russia, it's, mi it's microscopic. Let me show you a couple of my analytics, because YouTube no longer shows you the ratio of thumbs up to thumbs down. But my video from two days ago got 66,000 views, 3,609 thumbs up, only 64 thumbs down. The one about Putin's health, 253,000 views. It's gotten 10,777 thumbs up, only 190 thumbs down. Those 190 people out of 253,000, they're either evil and they support genocide and the mass murder of civilians, or they're idiots and they believe Russian propaganda about Nazis and biolabs and uh, NATO expansion and aggression and all that nonsense. So Russia's soft power ranking is going to collapse. Their ability to get what they want around the world without threatening military action, military force, it's going to be much harder for Russia probably for a very long time. It took 20 years for the United States to recover uh, from the invasion of Iraq. Potentially, it could take Russia, even doing everything right, to decades in order to recover from this disastrous invasion of Ukraine. But let's now talk about who is becoming the master of soft power, who has greatly 
uh, increase the prestige of their country and their culture and their language, and that would be President Zelensky, President Zelensky in Ukraine. And this guy doesn't have any hard power. His military is doing the best that they can, but if it wasn't for Western aid and Western support, they would have already have lost and been absorbed by Russia. And let me just show you some of the fan art uh, going up around the world, depicting Zelensky as the underdog, as the hero Harry Potter, and Putin is uh, evil and Lord Voldemort. I like this one of Captain Ukraine with the Ukrainian colors. Here's a very uh, touching one about Superheroes are taking a bow to the real heroes in this conflict, doctors and nurses, soldiers on the front line, and President Zelensky. He's gone from a peacetime civilian president to a wartime president. And this is one of my favorite ones of President Zelensky. He was made into a Lego. And thankfully for Ukraine, he is a younger man with more energy, uh, unlike perhaps Vladimir Putin, but he's also an actor and a comedian, and he's studied politics. He understands that he can't force America to give him anything. He can't force the UK or France or Germany to do anything. All he can do is basically schmooze and charm the world and get them to feel solidarity that the Ukrainians' struggle and fight is also the world's struggle and fight. I can't tell you how impressed I've been with his public relations campaign and his social media presence where he puts out these daily videos to give both his people encouragement but remind the world of what the bigger struggle is if Russia succeeds in taking Ukraine. And uh, an example I want to share with you guys, maybe you saw this kitchen cabinet that went viral. Do you want to know how we are feeling in Ukraine? Like this shelf. Russians try to break us, but we are holding on, and we will hold on to victory. So literally, the ceiling is gone, the floor is gone, the appliances are gone, but somehow this kitchen cabinet survived. The dishes are still on the drying rack, the teapots are still on the shelf, the ceramic rooster is still on top, and it hasn't been broken. And President Zelensky is savvy enough to pick up on this. <clears throat> So when Prime Minister Boris Johnson visited Kyiv, they went on a field trip to find this cabinet, to find this rooster. Pottery made by Ukrainian artists of the 20th century stands still along with the famous kitchen cabinet after the shelling of Bordienka. And uh, President Zelensky, I think, found that rooster, had it wiped down, and has now uh, placed it on his desk in his office. So when he gives presidential addresses on camera. You can see that symbol, you can see that meme, you can see that image of the rooster <laughs> in the background. So it's just little things like this that people on the internet, uh, people looking for encouragement, for hope, for guidance, for inspiration. It's stuff like this that people really love and potentially can be a force multiplier when it comes to soft power in a war like this. Okay, everyone, that's all for this update video. If you found it informative, consider giving me a thumbs up. Really helps out with the channel. All of the videos and articles that I showed you, I'll link in the description down below. As always, until the next video, take care, be safe.